Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at simplifying algebraic fractions. So, let's start off with this first one, and we're going to add this fraction with this fraction. Now we still follow the rules of adding fractions that we would normally do. In other words, we have to make the denominators here the same. Okay, so if I look at 8 and 4, what is the uh, lowest common multiple? What can I change them to? Well, 8 is obviously in the 8 times table, and 4 is obviously in the 8, uh, eight times table. So I can change my denominators here to both be 8. Okay, so what do I do to 8 to get to 8? Well, I just times it by 1. That's nice and easy. What do I do to the 4? To get to 8, well, I times it by 2. So to keep this fraction the same, to keep it equivalent, I need to also times the top bit by 2 as well. So 3x times by 2 is 6x. And x times 1 is obviously just x. Now my denominators are the same. I can just simply add the numerators, the top bits here. So x plus 6x is 7x. And then, obviously, my denominator stays as 8. So it's exactly the same rules as if I was adding fractions. Same down this one down here. This time I'm subtracting. So again, same rules apply. I need to make the denominators the same. So what's in the 7 and the 3 times table? Well, what I can do is, to get a common multiple, is times them together. So 7 times 3 is 21. Therefore, 21 is in the 3 times table, and it's in the 7 times table. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to change my denominator to be 21 for both of these. And what do I do to 7 to get to 21? Well, I times it by 3. And therefore, I must times the top, the numerator, by 3 as well. So 6x times 3 is 18x. And what do I do to 3 to get to 21? Well, I times that by 7. So again, I must times the numerator of this 2x here by 7. So 2x times by 7 is 14x. Now my denominators are the same. I can subtract the numerators. So 18x take away 14x is simply 4x. And then I'm over 21 like so. So my rules are just exactly the same as if I was adding or subtracting uh, fractions normally. No different with this one, even though it looks a bit more um, complicated. Don't worry, just follow the same rules. I've got 6 and 4. So what's the lowest common multiple of 6 and 4? Well, that's 12. So let's change the denominator to be 12 in both of these. There we go. And then what do I do to 6 to get to 12? Well, I times it by 2. So I've got to times the everything... That's the numerator up here, the 2a plus 1, I've got times everything by 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick it in a bracket. So that's 2a plus 1 in the bracket, and I'm timesing the whole thing by 2. This one here, what do I do to 4 to get to 12? Well, I times it by 3. And you'll notice this one is already in brackets because I'm timesing it by 3. So all I, what I can do here is go, right, okay, 3 times by 3 is 9. So on the outside of the bracket is a 9. And then the inside of the bracket stays the same. So that's something that we can just do there if there's already a bracket. Not a problem, just times what's on the outside by whatever you need to. Now we've got some brackets. Next thing to do would be to expand these. Obviously you can draw your grids. I'm just going to do it because it's just a single bracket. So 2 times 2a is 4a. And then 2 times 1 is 2. And my denominator is still 12. Now I'm going to add that to this one here. 9 times a is 9a. And 9 times 2 is 18, and of course my denominator is still 12. Denominators are the same, that's why we did it. So we can just add the numerators, we can add what's on top. So 4a plus 9a is 13a, and 2 plus 18 is uh, 20, so that would be plus 20 like so. Okay? No different here if we're subtracting, but you need to be a little bit careful, we'll come on to that in a minute. Again, different denominators need to make them the same, so it's the same thing up here, 6 and 4, 6 and 4. I'm going to make them both 12. So my denominator is going to be made to be 12. Okay, and what do we do to 6? Well, it's the same thing, 6 times 2 gets me 12, must times the top by 2 as well then, so 5b times by 2 is just 10b. 
And what do I times 4 by to get to 12? Well, and again, I times that by 3, just like the same at the top there. I times everything in there, so that's going to be my 3, and then inside the bracket is my 2b plus 1. So, next step, just to expand that bracket, well, the first one's easy, that can just stay as 10b over 12, take away, and then again, just expand that single bracket, you can draw a grid if you wish, I'm just going to expand it, so 3 times 2b is 6b, uh, and 3 times 1 is 3, and then that's all over 12 as well. Now this is where you need to be a little bit careful with taking away, because you do 10b, take away 6b is 4b, that's not a problem. But then we need to take away this plus 3, so that's actually going to be minus 3. So just be very careful of that, you're taking it away, so that must be minus plus 3, so it's minus 3. And of course that's still all over 12. So there's a few examples of that. Let's carry on and see what happens when we make it just a little bit trickier. So what happens if in our algebraic fraction we actually don't have numbers, we have uh, variables on the bottom here as well. Well, the same rules apply. We still need to make the denominators the same, but it's not as easy to figure out what they need to be. But if you remember from our 7 and 3 example, if I did 7 times 3, I got 21, which is a common multiple. I'm going to use the same logic here and times both of these together to get a common multiple to go underneath my denominator, to get a common denominator. So c times c plus 1 is c, and then c plus 1 in brackets. So if I times them together, I have that common uh, multiple, if you like, so I can then have my common denominator, like so. Now what do I do to this fraction to get that? Well, I've got c, and I need c, and then times it by c plus 1, so I actually times this by c plus 1. So I must do the same to the top, so that's 5, and in brackets, c plus 1 to show that I'm timesing that. And I've already got c plus 1, but I need to get c times c plus 1. So all I've done with this one is I've just timesed it by c. So I have to do the same to the top, so that's 3c. Now I have um, my denominators to be the same. I can just subtract the numerators. But again, I've got this bracket, so I'm just going to expand that bracket at the top. So 5 times c is 5c. 5 times 1 is obviously 5. And then that's all over my common denominator. There we go. So now I've expanded that, I can just work this out. So 5c take away 3c is 2c. 5 take away nothing is obviously just going to be 5. And then I have my denominator as such. So don't be put off if it's a variable. Just times them together and then just follow the same steps as we would do normally. So let's have a go at this one then. Slightly trickier because we've got... Um, two bits here, as opposed to just the one bit there. So this is going to be a double bracket. So to make our denominators the same, what must we do? Again, we're just going to times these together to have the common denominator. So q plus 2 in one bracket, q plus 1 in the other, and plus q plus 2 and q plus 1. So just times them together gives us that common denominator. So what do we do to this one to get to that? Well, I've already got the q plus 2, and I times it by q plus 1. So I have to do the same to the top. So 6 times, let's put it here, times q plus 1 will give us uh, 6 bracket q plus 1. And what do we do to this one here? Well, I've already got the q plus 1, so I need to times it by q plus 2. So again, I'm going to stick that in a bracket. Like so. Next step, just expand those brackets on the top. Again, you can use your grids if you want, but I'm just going to quickly do it. So 6 times q is 6q, 6 times 1 is 6, plus 4 times q is 4q, and 4 times 2 is 8, and of course our denominators are the same. So I'll just write that out. Like there, there we go. Once we've done that, we can just add the numerators like we've done before. So 6q plus 4q is obviously going to be 10q. And 6, add the 8, gives us uh, 14. And that's going to be all over q plus 2 
and our Q plus 1. Now what you can do is it says, put it in its simplest form, you can factorise uh, that top there. So you'll notice that 2 is the highest common factor of 10 and 14. So you could factorise that top one there to be Q bracket 5Q plus 7. And again, the denominator stays the same. So you could just add that little extra step there in our simplifying process. And there we have our answer. So that's what to do if you have that. So you could have something really tasty like this. So let's have a go at this. Same concept here. I'm going to times these together to get my common denominator. So let's do that. So that's going to give me x minus 2, x plus 5. And I'm taking away x minus 2, x plus 5. What do we times this by? Well, I've uh, already got my x minus 2, so I'm timesing it by x plus 5, like so. So that's going to give me x minus 3, x plus 5. And this one here, I've got my x plus 5, so I'm timesing it by x minus 2, times it by that. So I'm going to have my x plus 4, x minus 2. There we go. So. What do we do now? Well, we can expand these brackets on the top. I'm going to leave these factorised on the bottom because they're the same, so it doesn't matter. I'll leave them, but I'm going to expand those top ones there. So again, you can draw your big grids. In fact, let's do that. Those double brackets always could make a mistake. So we've got the x minus 3. We've got the x plus 5. This is for expanding this one here. So I have x squared minus 3x plus 5x minus 15. When I simplify that, I'll have minus 2x, so that's not a problem. And then for this one over here, I'm going to have x plus 4, again with times in these, and x uh, minus 2, so x squared plus 4x minus 2x minus 8. When I simplify these, I will have 2x, and then we can put them together. So I'm going to have this one here, which was x squared. Oops, sorry, that's plus 2x, isn't it? 5x minus 3x is plus 2x, so plus 2x, then my minus 15, all over x minus 2, uh, oh, x plus 5, and take away this one here, which was x squared plus 2x minus 8, all over the x minus 2, x plus 5. Cool, yep, definitely worth doing the grids there, because we might have made a mistake with that one there. So once we've done that, we can definitely uh, now just go with the, numer uh, the numerators here. So x squared take away x squared is nothing. They cancel each other out. 2x take away 2x, again, cancels out. And then this one here needs to be a little bit careful um, with this one because we're going to have minus 15 take away let's definitely take away there, take away minus 8. So if you take away a negative, it turns into a plus, turns into an add. So minus 15, add 8 uh, will give us minus 7. And of course, that's still all over our common denominator, which is x minus 2 and x plus 5 like so. So there we go, that looked horrible, but we just followed the same steps, being very, very careful, especially with our negatives, and then we have our answer there. Right, let's go on to what happens if we multiply or divide uh, variables. So we'll just have a little look at a few of those, because that's much easier. So when we're timesing uh, fractions, it's really easy. We just times the top and times the bottom. So this one here, we just times the top, so four times two is eight. And we times the bottom, 5x times 3x is 15x squared. So nothing wrong with that, just times the top, times the bottom. Same thing with this one here, 9x times 2 is 18x. And 8 times 3x is 24x. But we can simplify that because 
if I look at the 18 and 24, it's just a fraction. So what goes into 18 and 24? Well, 6 does. So I can divide both of them by 6. So 18 divided by 6 is 3. And 24 divided by 6 is 4. And this has got x's on top and bottom. So if you look at my dividing variables video, you'll know that we can cancel them out. So actually this one here is just 3 quarters. So it looked a bit horrible, but our answer is actually quite nice. Dividing, exactly the same as if we were dividing normal fractions, we're going to use our KFC. So I'm going to keep the first fraction the same, so that's the 15y over 8. I'm going to flip the second fraction, so that's 2y over 5, and change the divide two at times. And again, I'm just going to times the top, times the bottom. So 15y times 2y is 30y squared, and then 8 times 5 uh, is 40 and again we can simplify that I've got the 30 over 40 I can divide both of those by 10 which leaves me with 3y squared over 4 or 3 quarters y squared however you would prefer to look at that and the final one here this is just a taster um, for the next video which is uh, um, simplifying algebraic fractions by factorizing so this is just to give you a heads up that there is another step to this so if I've got my little quadratic here, my x squared minus x uh, minus 2, as I just said a minute ago, you can factorise that. So if I draw my big grid, I've got my x squared here, I've got my minus 2, I've got my x times x is x squared. What multiplies to get 2? Well, 1 times 2, and that's my only option. And I need to get minus 1, if you like, minus 1x. So how do I do that? Well, minus 2 plus 1 will give me minus 1, so that's minus 2x plus x, so when I simplify I have my minus x which is what I wanted, so if, if that didn't make sense that's just factorising into double brackets, check out that video if that bit didn't make sense. So what we can do is, is we can actually say that is x plus 1 and then x minus 2, because so we can factorise that. Then we can just apply our normal KSC rules so keep the first one the same, flip the second one, so that will be x plus 1, x minus 2 all over 8, and then change the divide to a times, and then we can just times them, so that's going to be 3, x plus 1, x minus 2 all over 8, x minus 2 and then hopefully you can see what I'm going to do here I've got an x minus 2 on the top and the bottom so just like we did here with the x's I can just cross those out because they will cancel and then that leaves me with 3 x plus 1 all over 8 so this is exactly what I'm going to be talking about in the next video which is simplifying algebraic fractions via factorizing so definitely check that one out and then you'll know everything to do with simplifying algebraic fractions so hopefully that helps guys thanks for watching